Hello students, welcome back to classes on computer organization. So in this session, let us uh, discuss the topics on pipelining, which is from module 5. So pipelining, uh, which lets us to go for the parallel execution. Okay. So let us see the basic concepts. Uh, as you can see here, the basic building block of a computers are introduced in the preceding chapters as you are aware of. The basic building blocks of the computers are input, output, memory, isn't it? So the organization of the same. So <coughs> here uh, we will discuss in detail about the concepts of the pipelining which is used in the modern computer to achieve high performance. As I told you earlier, this is used to use it for the parallel computation purpose and hence performance will be obviously improved. So, compiler optimization technique and all that will come here uh, how to uh, improve the performance those concepts we will be discussing in detail. So let us see the basic concepts. So the speed of the execution of program is influenced by many factor right. So one way to improve the performance is to use the faster circuit technology to build the processor and the main memory. So another possibility is to arrange the hardware so that more than one operation can be performed at a same time. That is what the parallel computation is. So we have to arrange the hardware in such a way that it should be capable of performing more than one task in a given interval of time or same time. Right? So in this way, the number of operations performed per second is increased even though the elapsed time need to, need to perform any one operation is not changed. Obvious. This is obvious. Suppose um, an instruction or a program, say a program which needs uh, uh, 10 seconds for the execution okay? and another program which needs uh, 12 seconds for the execution. So if you perform, uh, say they are independent to each other, if you go for parallel computation, what will happen? If you go for uh, one after the other computation or sequential computation, first initially 10 seconds program 2 should halt isn't it so 10 or entire 10 second uh, the entire processor it is utilized by uh, program 1 only in case of sequential execution right but if you go for parallel execution what happens is since they are independent to each other so uh, program 1 and program 2 can be computed simultaneously so first 10 seconds are utilized by program 1 as well as program 2 right so at 12th second program 2 also will be completed by the time 10th uh, second program 1 also completes right. So by 12 seconds we can finish the execution of both if you go for parallel computation means but if you go for sequential it takes how much time 10 plus 12 22 altogether isn't it. You can observe we have we are not changing the uh, computation of individual instruction we are not reducing the time of computation of individual instruction or a program but overall computation time is uh, reduced by introducing this strategy okay how to implement this that is what the uh, <coughs> thing is we are going to study about so this is the sequential execution diagram for sequential execution as i told you just now you have to wait see f1 e1 f stands for fetch e stands for execution so execution of a complete instruction refer my previous videos so execution of complete instruction which involves this you have studied even for the internals as well right which involves uh, two steps actually fetch phase two phases fetch phase and execution phase so f1 and e1 which f1 stands for fetch fetching the instruction 1 e1 stands for execution of instruction 1 so altogether it is marked as i1 so if you consider this as the time window then f1 e1 after completion of f1 followed by e1 uh, instruction 2 execution begins that f2 followed by e2 then once it completes instruction i3 or instruction 3 execution begins so f3 followed by e3 as you can see here this is what the time window or timeline see right uh, so this is the hardware organization okay and instruction fetch unit and execution unit 
so there is an inter interstage buffer which carries out the uh, fetch phase result of the fetch phase now pipeline execution diagram 3 okay which tells you about the pipeline execution so what is that pipeline execution so overall time at clock cycle number 4 and the entire three instruction executions are completed here as per this diagram as per the first diagram see clock cycle 1 2 3 4 5 how many blocks you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 clock cycles are assume each block that is each it can be either fetch phase or execution phase each phase of the instruction needs one clock cycle for the execution that is what the simple assumption we are making so how many blocks are there you count you will come to know what is the clock cycle required there are six blocks so six clock cycles are required for the execution here at diagram one for sequential execution but but observe the diagram three so what happens count how many clock cycles are there check the window timeline only four clock cycles are check the count last block where it ends at fourth clock cycle it ends isn't it that means instruction one so fetch phase is carried out at clock cycle number one and followed by execution phase at clock cycle number two so execution of first instruction so fetch at the same time you can go for fetching the second instruction that is what parallelism we are achieving okay instruction number two we are overlapping with the execution phase of instruction one since execution of instruction one is independent from fetching the data from instruction two right so at clock cycle number two slightly we how we can observe the parallelism execution of the first instruction followed by fetching the second instruction okay at clock cycle number three execution of instruction uh, two is completed at the same time fetching the third instruction as we have carried out it for uh, previous step now for instruction two as well as instruction one in the same way fetching the third instruction and executing the second instruction is carried out at clock cycle number three that's it hence we can achieve the parallelism so if you understand this uh, diagram the entire concept will be easier for you this is very simple concept very easy to understand please don't leave this topic okay same thing is explained here what is f1 what is f2 f3 and e1 e2 e3 please go through these explanations okay i have already shared uh, the material pdf material in the group okay the processing of an instruction need not to be divided into only two steps actually there are four steps okay what are the four steps here here in detail we are studying about there are four steps actually fetch decode execute and write so fetch means reading the instruction from the memory that's what called as fetch decode means decoding the instruction and fetch the source operand execute means perform the specified operation like addition subtraction multiplication whatever and write means storing the result on the memory or destination location these are the four stages actually they are carried out during execution of any instruction but we have simplified that into two stages fetch and execute okay whatever it is we will be discussing with respect to these four stages now another <coughs> example will be discussing okay see here the similar diagram overlapping of the things we have taken four instructions okay please go through this diagram so here uh, first instruction which has got four stages now fetch decode execute and write right f1 d1 e1 and w1 again it is assumed that each and every stage is completed in one clock cycle so f1 d1 e1 and w1 they are completed in first four clock cycles then overlapping of the things since fetching the second instruction uh, we can do parallelly along with the decoding of the first instruction so decoding of second instruction can be done parallelly with execution of first instruction 
similarly execution of second instruction can be done parallelly with writing of the first instruction they are each buffers are different right followed by w2 that is writing the second instruction similarly for f3 so fetching the third instruction can be done parallelly along with the decoding of second instruction and execution of first instruction so there are four interstage buffers required one is to store the fetch result another one to store the decode another one to store the execution another one to store the write buffer uh, content okay uh, please remember any any two identical types cannot be done parallelly so we can go for a different kind of strategies parallelly but we cannot perform the identical things parallelly so if you observe this carefully you will come to know see here we have d1 and f2 we are carrying out parallelly but we are not carrying out f1 and f2 parallelly getting no and observe this thing see what we are carrying out parallelly execution decoding and fetching we are carrying out parallelly but we are not carrying out the identical task like execution of first and second no it is not possible since there are there is only one buffer right so parallelly we can carry out the task but the task should be different they should not be identical this thing should be there in your mind if you understand this then entire concept will be easier for you okay observe this space things are overlapped right so writing the first instruction followed by executing the second decoding the third one and fetching the fourth one since they are independent they are not identical to each other so we can carry out them parallelly right similarly w2 e3 and d4 w3 and e4 and w4 getting no so this is the just now i told about the interstage buffer see there are three interstage buffers available b1 b2 b3 so b1 stores the result of the fetch result of decode result of execution at b3 okay so we cannot uh, carry out the identical things parallelly if they are independent to each other then we can go for it and we can Ex uh, we can do the uh, parallel computation we can have the parallel computation this is what the four stage pipeline is very very important topic from this module from fifth module please don't leave this topic very simple topic okay if you uh, understand these two diagrams this one and the previous one along with this buffer stage that's it that is enough that is enough to, to score minimum 10 marks okay in the next session let us discuss something about the pipeline performance how to how what are the factors that affect the pipeline performance and how to improve the performance okay see you in my next video thanks for watching